I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. I have a bunch of cameras I'm reviewing. I got three cameras from Cadex. I've got the Micro Eagle, and I've got the Micro Predator, and I took them all out into the field, and I just I plugged them in and got a whole bunch of DVR footage. I played with the settings, tried to find the best settings for each of them. I got like I don't know, for like 40 minutes of raw footage, and I'm going to sort of clip it down, but not clip it down too much so you guys can dig through the raw footage. Now, if you're turned off by the idea of digging through the footage, I made another video where I just boil it all down to you and like for you in like five minutes and just tell you, here's what the results. And if you'd rather go watch that, you can. There's a link in the upper, the ding, there it is. You can go just click right on over there. Um, and... If you want to just look at the data for yourself, I've got a web page I've made with a spreadsheet containing specs for not just these cameras, but all the cameras I could find. And if you want to just go, if you're the kind of person who learns best from a spreadsheet, you can go down to the video description, check, just click that link. Just, just leave this video playing in the background. It doesn't matter. Uh, go check that out. Okay, on to the raw data. Very first impressions. Looking at the trees, we're getting some shadow detail, even in a relatively high contrast environment. We are getting a little bit of blowout here on the ridge. So just that's just assessing the dynamic range. The white balance looks a little, looks like it's struggling a little here. The white balance looks a little reddish. A little too red. Yeah, you can really... With the sun in the background, though, it's doing a good job of not getting too confused with the exposure. And that's a really good-looking image right there. And I don't just mean the subject. <laughs> Let's see what we got here in the menus. <clears throat> the exposure... Brightness, backlight compensated exposure mode, shutter control. Yeah, we don't want those. Gain control, huh? Interesting. Yeah, so we're in a very bright environment, so I guess the gain is low. We don't need a lot of gain. The standard can be either PAL or NTSC, and you can choose between 16.9. As far as the image goes, I mean, I have no complaints in this lighting for sure. That looks pretty freaking good. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Huh. Interesting. So we have different exposure modes. I probably want backlight compensated. That's what most people seem to think gives the best results. From light compensated. Here's globe. That's uh, you definitely don't want center when you're flying a quad. So global, and then backlight compensated. That's not bad though. The globe mode is not bad. Backlight compensated just brings up the shadows a little bit. I think that's probably how most people would want to fly it. It seems to me like this one is not doing as good a job at resolving details in the distance. Look 
get a little bit more adjustment here. Okay, that's the F1. I'm going to go back to the SDR one real quick. I just want to see. Yeah, I feel like we got more detail in the, just a little more detail out of the SDR one. Both of these are supposed to be a 1200 line sensor, but the SDR one I think has a better sensor. Yikes. Okay, well, this is clearly a CCD sensor. Uh, yeah. So, CMOS for the win. Am I right? I got a little something maybe on the lens, I don't know. Yeah. You can see on the roof, you can see on the roof here, it's really struggling with the dynamic range of the image. It does, it does seem like there's something, there's a little bit of something right here. I don't know what that is. It's not on the lens, but sorry about that. Um, you can see it's really struggling with the dynamic range of the picture. The highlights are really blown out, and that's true, like right here, and just all throughout the trees. So, immediately, I would like this a lot less compared to the compared to the others. Let's see what we got. Backlight, backlight compensated. Oh, ugh. are we sure this is? Let me just reset this. Factory reset. Backlight compensated. Okay, that's not better. <laughs> Gain control. No. Christ. Okay. Wide dynamic range. So, wide dynamic. D DWDR just increases the shadow level. It, it makes the shadows a little bit brighter. Um, so that's not even, that's not the same as wide dynamic range that we think of. Okay, this is, that's not working at all. <coughs> yeah. So it's got a OSD, so that's nice. We could tweak it to probably make it look a little better, but I don't know why we would. Because, again, uh, so that's, that's the S1. Let's go back to the SDR one. That's the SDR one. So, in this case, um, it seems like we've got a softer image for sure. It's definitely a softer image. Now, is the lens like out of focus? I don't I don't think so. I think that's just how these cameras look. Let's see if I can get it a little sharper. No. Oh see that's no, that's way better actually. Like right there. Is now now that it's <laughs> now that it's focused properly, you can see a lot of that digital noise coming out. I wonder if they did that on purpose. If they intentionally slightly defocus the lens to downplay that. There we go. We've still got a little bit of, it's still a little bit defocused off in the distance. So we're definitely getting just a ton more detail, but we do have some of that, some of that CMOS shimmer that some people really dislike. Now this is the it's Turbo S1, not the Turbo Micro. And it is another, yeah, so it's basically the same as the Micro S1. I feel like it's slightly better. It's actually, that's, I would call this pretty decent, actually. This is really actually pretty decent, honestly. For a, for a CMOS camera. We're still getting, we're still getting some blowout in the distance, but we have really decent shadow details and it doesn't have that super craggy look where everything, all, every little edge is just blown out like we saw with the micro. Let's go back to the micro real quick and just compare. 
So now we're back to the Micro S1. Yeah. Well, I think the Micro S1 is just slightly worse in, in its exposure, but yeah, interesting. Okay, so then let's do this. Yeah, so this is the Rotor Riot Runcam Swift V2, and I'm showing you this because, and this is stock, this is full stock. I'm showing you this because it's also a CMOS camera, right? So it's a it's a fair comparison to the Cadex uh, S1. Okay. It's doing a way better job at the exposure, isn't it? It's doing a way better job. Like over here. And and over there where it was super blown out. See it's 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 doing a way better job at the exposure. Yep, I would I pr I would prefer this one, no question. It's doing a way better job at not blowing out the highlights. Yep. So let's see if we can tweak them and get them to be a little better. We're going to use the Micro, the Turbo Micro S1, um, because it's not mounted in a quad, so it's easy to get at the menu. What can we do here? The problem, and we'll look at the roof. I'll look at the roof here and look at this area here. That sort of highlights, haha, -ha, pun intended, the difference. We're getting really blown out highlights, so let's... Go to image adjust and if we turn down the contrast what happens it's not getting better I know that brightness is nominally the thing you should change here I'm aware of that but sometimes the settings on these cameras don't work as you would expect actually I think the brightness got so then backlight just made it horrible do we not have a brightness if we go to LCD is that better I mean I guess this is technically an LCD not a CRT I mean, that just seems to make the whole thing a little brighter that's not really I don't think that's really we have contrast where's brightness Oh, exposure. There. So, what if we bring the brightness down? Will that tame some of those highlights? We're getting there. There. So that kind of brings the highlights under control. And makes the whole picture look darker. We definitely have lost a lot of shadow detail here looking into the trees. What if we then, what if we then, by the way, look at the difference digital watt dynamic range makes. Watch what the shadows do as I turn this down. You should see the shadows are getting darker while the rest of the image is remaining relatively unchanged. DWDR makes the shadows lighter. It raises the black level. That just doesn't work at all. <laughs> that just doesn't work at all. It's ridiculous. Uh, having turned the brightness down, we have, I think that's a little closer to what I was seeing in the run, Rotoriot Runcam Swift. Contrast, whenever, whenever I'm not really sure what one of these settings is gonna do, I just start changing it until I see a difference. I'm looking at that highlight on the back wall. And I am seeing details come in as I turn the contrast down. Oh, well, there that. Now, this highlight here that was. Com hey, don't make a liar of me. This is a highlight here that was completely blown out. Oh, it's because I put my finger in there. <laughs> That's when my finger goes away. I've got the details back in. But what have I done to the overall image? 
Because see, now the overall image is a lot darker. So then let's go to exposure and see if we can bring the brightness back up some and get some of the shadow detail back out. And sort of split the difference. Yeah. Now, see, now we're blowing out the roof. We're blowing out the highlights over on the roof again. So, that might be a good compromise. Of course, I would really need to tune this under different lighting conditions to be sure. That seems like it might be an okay compromise, though. Yeah, I guess this is an improvement. I'm not sure though it's just a much darker image and i feel like i'm losing a lot of detail in the shadows that i would really miss if i was flying it feels like it would make problems for me watch what happens when i reset jesus really well i think the default settings on this thing are not very good <laughs> that's what i would take away I would, I would reduce the brightness and the contrast some, but I'd need to try this out on different days, especially like a cloudy day. Um, this is not that sunny of a day, although it looks like it in the camera. Okay, this is the Fox Ear uh, Micro Predator. I'm really excited to see how this performs. Um, well, like like the larger Predator, it's got a blue cast. I don't know why they do that, but it does. It looks very, very similar to the larger Predator. It's got good detail. I like the green in the trees. Last time, yeah, it looks very, it looks very similar. Uh, so... I'm not going to dive into like tweaking this like I've, I've got a whole video where I tweaked the predator but uh, yeah I just I don't adore the out of the box image on the predator it's got a blue cast I think it can be tweaked to look pretty good but and I've been flying uh, with the sun low in the sky in the winter and it it's also given me some trouble <laughs> with shadows, losing the, sh losing the ground in the shadows, which the eagle doesn't do. But let's compare this to the full-size Predator and see how they stack up. Now this is with my tweaked settings, which I think I just raise the brightness just a little bit. And that's, that's, I think, way better. In the stock settings. So let's try that on the micro. So what I like to do on the micro is I like to bring the brightness. What do we oh no don't flip it. I like to bring the brightness up. To help bring out the shadow detail. That's a little too much. And that also seems to relieve some of the blue cast a little bit. And I like a pretty saturated image. I feel like bringing up the color gain restores some of the washed out colors that result from turning the brightness up. And we have lighter shadows as well now with the brighter brightness turned up. See, I would say... <coughs> I would say that's an improvement. I'm going to hit not save and don't save them. And you can decide for yourself when it pops back. Oh, no. Hang on. Camera reset. Okay, ready? Oh, yeah. See? I mean, I would say mine was an improvement. Mine gives up a little bit of contrast for a little more shadow detail, which I think is a bit better. Okay. So this is the Micro Eagle. I'm super excited about this because I love the Eagle. And if they've managed to capture them, wonder wow, they even have a big lens on it. That's kind of cool. 
Yeah. That pretty much looks like an eagle. I'm surprised at how dark the shadows are. But you can see if you look up under the porch that it still has the the good dynamic range of the eagle. Oh yeah. <laughs> Give me a break. <coughs> I might raise the brightness on this slightly just to lighten the shadows a little bit. It looks like it has, my gut feeling is it has slightly less dynamic range than some of the others. So it's it's got a more contrasty picture, which some people are really going to like, but a little bit less shadow detail. I think that's a really good looking picture though. It's struggling a little with the with the white balance, you can see. Here the white balance goes red, and here it's a little too red. You can almost see it. Yeah. So that's another thing the Eagle One did for sure. And it's got the shimmer. It's got the shimmer. Look here in the trees. The sh you can see the shimmer real bad. So, And then what I like to do is max gain 7. Let's see if it does the uh, white flash. Yup. Uh, so good for you, Eagle. White flash, definitely. So all I like to do is bring the gain down to f solve that. Now you won't get... See, now no problem. You won't get as good a... Uh, oh, God, even with a gain of two. Really? Oh, man, that is really horrible. See? Okay. Uh, go even lower? No. So, yeah, with a gain of one, you won't get as good low light performance but at least it fixes that problem. We can turn the WDR up. I don't think you could do that on the others. Oh, very interesting. Now that's giving you a much contrastier image with less dynamic range. And here is a more, this is more like the Eagle One. <laughs> yeah, oh, I kind of like, I like that. But you can actually pick, that's really nice. I'm not even sure that, I don't remember seeing that even on the Eagle Pro. And then you can turn the sharpness down, and they've got it on manual and six. And if we look up here at the shimmering in the trees, let's see if we can turn the sharpness down a little bit. So now there's much less shimmering, but also look at the I like like look at that tree there. It has a kind of a watercolor look, whereas if we turn the sharpening back up to six, it really brings the edges out, doesn't it? But if I turn it, but you can see the shimmering over here in the tree leaves and the branches. So there, I'll show you again. Five, four, three on the detail and four, three on the edge. We can, so we get, by turning the sharpening down, we can like completely get rid of the shimmering, but we end up with a softer image. You can decide where you like that. I usually like that around three or four. Let me test these other guys with the, uh, the hand over the screen test. Okay, so this is the Turbo Micro SDR1. SDR1, okay, here we go. Hand over the screen test. Not bad. Not as bad as the Eagle. Not as good as the Eagle, though, when the Eagle was on the lowest gain setting. Does this have adjustable gain? Gain control auto, manual. If we set that to manual and one, no, it's still just as bad. Okay. Or oh, it's not that bad. I mean, it's not that bad. This one I think has a little bit of, a, it's a little out of focus. It's, it's really more than a little out of focus. Jeez. There you go. And let's see, Predator, this is the Predator, yeah, unmistakable. So the Predator is great at this game. It's really, I think, the best of all. And then lastly is the SDR one. Yeah, okay, all righty. That's gonna do it. Let's, let's let's kill this. Let's kill this thing.